Hey, ever found yourself at the start of a game, ward in hand, wondering where the heck should this thing go? Look no further. Today, we're looking at the pros' go-to spots for their first set of wards. Is it their own high ground mid or the enemies? Top or bottom rune? What's the priority? And don't forget about those wildcard wards that could be literally anywhere else. Stick around as we unpack all of this and more so you can get your team off on the right foot with the best first ward placement. Pro teams have their warding game down to a science, and they typically focus on three key areas. First is mid, no surprise there. It's the hot spot for scouting runes, spotting ganks, and getting high ground vision to help in your mid's matchup. Second and third are the jungle entrances and the jungle bounty runes. There are a few other spots the pros like to ward, but we'll dive into those later. For now, let's focus on these three areas and look at examples from pro games to pinpoint where these wards go and delve into the strategy behind each placement. In this match between Betboom and Shopify, both teams followed a similar warding pattern. Each placed a ward mid on their side of the river and another on the entrance of their jungle, which also scouts the jungle bounty rune. If there's anything you take from this video, let it be this. This jungle bounty rune ward is a hot trend among pro teams. Almost everyone is doing it. I'll explain why in a moment, but first let's see some of the different placements there are for it. On Radiant, you've got options. A spot that scouts deeper into the jungle, Another on this high ground, just get a teammate to clear it with a quelling blade, or even near the stairs, either above or to the right. On Dire, you can place it at the top of the stairs, practically on top of this watcher, or go deeper into the jungle, which can also scout for stacks. Some teams even opt for a ward at the top of the stairs to the left. While this won't give you vision of the bounty rune, it will let you know if an enemy rotates towards it, which you can then safely assume it's been taken. Warding these key areas is popular for good reason. First off, these wards are your best friends against roaming heroes. They'll let you know if someone like Dark Willow or Hoodwink, two phenomenal roamers in this specific game, decides to leave their lane for a bounty rune or to secure power runes and potentially gank mid. Knowing their movement is crucial to prevent your mid from getting tilted during unexpected rotations. Though, let's be real, they'll still find a reason to rage and say trash the port, and if you're lucky, even pull a Quinn. The second reason this ward is good is if your mid has a bottle, these wards can be a game changer. Knowing whether the bounty rune is available or not can help recover a struggling laning phase for them. Now, let's circle back to the mid wards. You might think there's nothing extraordinary about them, and you'd be mostly right. When it comes to mid warding, there are only a handful of spots that offer what you really need. Vision of the rune and the enemy's high ground. And let's face it, a couple of sentry wards can easily find most of the ward spots. But here's the kicker. The real magic of a good mid ward often lies in the timing and manner of its placement, not just the location. So, let's dive into some more pro matches and focus on how and when mid wards are placed rather than just where they're placed. Team Spirit very often smokes at the start of the game, a strategy that serves a dual purpose. First, it allows them to quickly and stealthily place a ward. Second, it can let you know if an enemy is in the area. If your smoke breaks, it's a dead giveaway that an enemy is nearby, which can help you determine where to place your ward. In this match, they send out Collapse to place the mid ward thanks to his high movement speed as a smoked axe. He places his ward on the enemy's high ground and retreats undetected. The goal? To give Laurel any extra assistance in his challenging matchup as Earth Spirit against Dazzle. On the flip side, Topson on Dazzle takes an almost identical approach, but instead of running straight down mid, he opts for the stairs and places his ward off to the side of the enemy's high ground. Why? To minimize the chances of it being dewarded and to help him continually harass Earth Spirit, turning an already favorable matchup into a dominant one. In this match, Team Spirit and OG seem to be reading from the same playbook echoing a strategy we saw in the previous example. Both teams pop a smoke and make a beeline for mid, aiming to secure a ward on the enemy's high ground. It's funny to see not just how often teams across the board opt for similar plays, but also how frequently teams within the same match end up mirroring each other's movements. Here, both teams smoke and Celery from Game and Gladiators gets a ward down on the enemy's side on this high ground behind the large camp. This ward is nice for Quinn because it gives lots of vision of the enemy's high ground which will help Quinn harass the enemy Kunkka easier and know where he's standing, making it easier to hit him with his lightning storm bounces. Laurel, however, isn't as fortunate. Just as he's about to place his ward on the enemy's high ground near the top rune, his smoke breaks, forcing him to retreat. Laurel then swings around to the right side of the lane and ends up placing a safe and simple ward in almost the same spot as Celery's. Team Spirit vs Shopify Okay, sorry for the Team Spirit overload, but hey, they're great at warding and they even won this tournament, so can you blame me? In this match, they once again opt for a smoke at the start and head towards mid. Laurel pulls off a clever ruse here. He places his ward on his own stairs, but then continues into the river, creating the illusion that he warded the enemy's high ground. Fly is there to break Laurel's smoke and spots him with an empty inventory slot, 
further selling the idea that he warded Shopify's high ground. It doesn't end up baiting a sentry ward from Shopify, but it surely had them wondering. It's all mind games, and that's often a large component in this mini game that is warding. OG vs Tundra Both teams smoke and place one ward on the enemy's high ground mid, covering a rune, while the other is placed on their own jungle bounty rune. Yet another instance of teams mirroring each other's moves. 9 Pandas vs OG Both teams smoke and head for mid. I feel like I'm saying this every game. OG has an interesting approach here that we haven't seen yet. They send one person with an observer ward towards the enemy's high ground near each rune. BZM gets spotted and retreats. This makes it look like OG have just failed their attempt at getting a ward on the enemy's high ground. But actually, this opens Kitrak up to feeling safe about placing his ward. As for the other ward, both teams end up placing them in nearly identical spots, covering the radiant jungle entrance and the jungle bounty rune. Believe me yet that almost all teams are doing this? In summary, warding these key areas is a common practice for good reason. They offer immense value. But it's not just about where you place the ward, it's also about how and when you do it. Utilizing tactics like smoking at the start of the game to ward the enemy's high ground, or using misdirection to fake out your opponents, can make your wards far less susceptible to being dewarded. These subtle strategies can throw off the enemy and make your warding game that much stronger. Now, let's briefly discuss some unconventional ward spots that teams are utilizing at the start of the game, which deviate from the three primary areas we've been focusing on. OG like placing a ward here, which covers some movement through the river, extends slightly into the enemy's jungle, and also sees the top rune. Betboom opts for a cliff ward to the right of their mid lane. This is likely to protect stacks they make in their triangle for their Gyro and Beastmaster, who can clear them pretty easily. Shopify takes an offbeat approach by warding deep in their safe lane. This is a relatively rare sight, and it raises questions. Did they place this ward solely to secure first blood? Or perhaps they felt the need for that extra bit of vision to assist in their laning phase, or a combination of both. Fly from Shopify playing Nature's Prophet skills his TP level 1 to instantly place a ward to the right of the enemy's mid tower, then proceeds to ward the bottom jungle bounty rune. This ward near mid is cool because they'll be able to scout Bet Boom running up to place wards as long as they aren't smoked. So Shopify can then be pretty confident when dewarding, and that's exactly what happened. They saw GPK moving from right to left with his ward still in his inventory, confirming its eventual placement. Lastly, Team Spirit smoke into Tundra's triangle. While it may appear they're hunting for a kill, their true objective is to block both camps to slow down Tide's early game. To wrap everything up, Pro teams usually place one ward near mid and another by a jungle bounty rune. These wards are key for scouting early rotations and setting the game's pace. While there are slight variations in their placement, the core value they offer remains largely the same. When it comes to warding mid, the real strategy often lies not in where, but in the how and when. Mind games play a crucial role in effective warding. For instance, you can shuffle items in your inventory to give the illusion that you've just placed a ward, or deliberately mislead the enemy by running to a different spot after you're placing your ward. Experiment with these subtle tricks and review your replays to gauge their effectiveness. While the first three areas we discussed were the most common warding spots, don't hesitate to deviate based on the game and your team's needs. Having a good understanding of lane matchups and what the enemy team's game plan is can help you make more informed decisions. For example, if you anticipate the enemy will focus on stacking camps, consider placing a ward to either monitor that or block the camps outright. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, let me know something you learned in the comments and consider giving this video a like. Also check out my Discord server where we're growing a great community of Dota players, as well as my Twitch. I've been streaming my support ranked Immortal games recently, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, go check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something new with me.